Hi guys, uh, welcome to um, our next artist talk. Uh, with me today, I have Diana Abels and Dan Gian. Um, they are the two artists behind the group show Remembering While Looking. Um, it's a group collaboration between these two artists. Um, today I'm joined uh, by Andy Meyer, our exhibitions director, and I'm excited to uh, talk about their show and what it means to collaborate with one another. Um, as a reminder, 934 Gallery is a completely 100% volunteer run organization. Um, you can check us out at 934gallery.org or on Facebook and Instagram where you can check out um, upcoming shows and upcoming artist talks as well. You can view the show, uh, Remembering While Looking, on our website um, and see the uh, tour of the show that happened at the beginning of um, June. So uh, without further ado, let's talk to our two artists. Uh, yeah, so Diana and, um, and Dan, um, it's been a privilege and an honor to have your show up and it's been great to chat with you about it as, as we were installing and when we had your virtual opening. Um, so I guess I just wanted to start the conversation and maybe just bring up overall themes of your show and maybe what the viewer might expect to kind of experience as they walk through your show. I guess we can start with you, Dan, or whoever you want, however you want to start. Cool, thank you, Andy. Um... I guess remembering while looking is sort of like a underlying theme that Diana and I have long shared and through all years of studio practice sort of starting to reveal itself with more and more clarity. So when we talk about uh, collaboration in nine, uh, 934, it just become very natural to um, pair up the work that sort of speaks most under this theme. Um, my work are many work on paper. I recently in my studio practice I've been exploring oil on paper. It's kind of like a dilemma or parallel that it's hard to move forward yet it provides me a lot of challenge that is fun. Um, Diana you want to speak a little bit about your work? Yeah so I've been working uh, mostly with uh, digital video and digital imaging. So um, printed work that I've uh, created um, through a process of combination and collage and drawing on the computer. Um, and yeah, we, I guess maybe another thing to preface this with is we spent some time together last year and the year before, before Dan moved to Texas, um, just work like kind of just having studio time together. Um, so our um, sort of brainstorming, our kind of imagination of where our work was headed um, was kind of informed by that time together and sharing of ideas. Um, and so then naturally we wanted to then apply for a show together and um, we were excited to pair up our work. Uh, and it's a mix of work that was coming from that time and um, new work as well. Some of my work was um, more recently from earlier this year, um, but definitely still informed by those conversations we had together at the time. So Diana, you actually bring up um, a, a good thing I think that the audience uh, should know is that you guys um, came to us with this proposal together. Uh, a lot of the artists that show through 934, not all of them um, tend to be solo shows or solo uh, applications, um, you know, solo ideas, but you guys work together to come up with a show idea. Um, had, had both of you already experienced collaborating as artists, not necessarily with each other, because you just mentioned that you have collaborated with each other before, but with other artists in the past, or is this collaboration the first time that you've collaborated with artists? I had um, actually worked with a couple different uh, artists uh, during my time at Ohio State for grad school. Um, I had done a few um, like kind of large installations where we um, worked to more together on stuff. Um, this collaboration, I would say with Dan, we are, um, it's more of our own individual work, but paired together and sort of like created thematically together for kind of the same direction. Um, so I think that was an interesting, in my experience, an interesting divergence from saying, like, okay, if we're going to work together, we're going to create one thing together versus we can work in parallel um, 
and, and bring it together in the space uh, like in 34. Yeah. Yeah. Working in parallel and bringing it together is a beautiful way of saying how this collaboration come to place. Uh, our collaboration really wasn't started as a collaboration. It was just started as loneliness. Um, <laughs> We don't want to be left in studio by ourselves and working from a bubble. So when we started collaboration, it was really just like share a desk. That's a collaboration we began with. <laughs> and uh, um, put on an audio book in the background where we can sort of like, and I really like how natural and uncontrived this collaboration come to place. Um, in the beginning, I wasn't even seeking out for um, common ground in our practice. It was just like very, very slowly revealed itself that we are actually both in our own different medium and the method searching for a common sense of home and belonging. Um, I think that was what sort of makes the call of applying show together. And I think up to until this very moment, Diana and I probably still, correct me if you're wrong, um, seeing our own practice as very independent as a parallel of each other without really trying to make a project. Although that's something that Diana and I, especially I want to bring up to talk about with Diana for like next phase, like if there's actual uh, integrated collaboration for one project, I, I'm more excited to see that as a potential in the future direction. I like I like what you said the parallel right and as opposed to like actually collaborating on a single unit together you guys are, are parallel working together and and yeah you're right I mean thematically stepping into the space and looking at the work there there is this um, there are thematically these these uh, things that sort of play off of each other without um, you know Dan you working with video Diana you working um, you know well you do have some paper and and, and uh, collage elements, traditional collage elements in your video work, but um, without necessarily diving into either of your practices, individual practices, yeah. Right. Yeah, and I kind of wanted to bring up something about that point, because I like, I like what you guys are saying about the parallel, and your work spans so many different mediums in that show, you know, you have video work, and collage, and, and oil, and paper, acrylic, um, and I was just seeing if those two mediums kind of play off each other, or if they might have influenced each other, or do you think during the collaboration of making the work, you guys kind of just did your own thing, and, and at the end, you might have determined how the work talked to each other, or was it planned from the beginning, maybe? I think, I go ahead, Dan. I think mm -hmm. it's more of a latter one, the, uh, we create a work in our own term, mm -hmm. and it was an editorial process, after the show is granted, we point out um, the common ground, things that are connected but different um, to be presented in the same space that will allow the viewer to have a coherent but diverse experience under the same, the same theme, I would say. Okay. Diana? Yeah, um, I, would, I would agree with that. And then I would also add that I felt that my work evolved. So the work that ended up in the show, I think that it evolved and was informed by, I would say, looking at Dan's paintings while we were okay. together uh, and becoming more familiar with their work. And I think I was interested in um, kind of trying to wield the digital medium in a more painterly way in, in some ways than I had before. Um, that I, I was intrigued by her use of color and mark making and I wanted that um, to be present in my video work as well and um, so I think those kinds of aspects um, can, definitely came into play uh, in how I created the work but yeah it was sort of like a separate we go off make our stuff come back together and find like what's what amplifies and I think that's also true with the thematic nature of it is um, this idea of like kind of using a picture plane to build a, a story through time, to build a, a dimensional space um, that's also fractured, but comes together 
um, in that singular picture plane, and, and that's the sort of remembering while looking is that there's this act of, um, you know, diving into the image and, and seeing all the different working parts together, and, and that it, it um, speaks to like a, you know, sort of subconscious memory and, and imagination of, uh, and a reconfiguration of things that are familiar or remembered, um, and that we were kind of both taking that approach it separately as well and then coming back together and kind of seeing which which works successfully did that and, and bring them together in the show when you guys um are, are working parallel uh and you're showing each other uh work you're showing video you're showing paintings you're talking about color do you guys leave room for critique uh is there a critique process of each other's works at that point too yeah, sure. Yeah. And how does that work um, when when collaborating on a show and especially collaborating on a show distantly? How does how does that critique take place? Virtually. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I think during the process um, of editing work for the show, we send images for each other. We, we have um, Google Drive folder where we are constantly like dropping new work and sort of take out old work depends on. So in a way there's a platform, although we're not like doing it at the same time, but there's a platform, there's a box where new works come in and the works come out. And um, I am sure sub consciously, subconsciously where the work goes in and out also is sort of referencing the other work that is in the folder. Mm -hmm. um, and this practice sort of have expanded now, it's like sort of a critique space. It's like a Google Drive photo album where we're dropping our work and also give feedback, um, make suggestions, and also just talk about the underlying concept and story. Um, yeah, recently we both have made a comment of each other's work has become more and more abstract, which is, uh, very interesting place because we've known the past of each other's work so like the intention and the, the drive of a future work becomes very familiar um so in that way i think the collaboration that started from trying to apply shows back then for 934 continued until today and it's informing new works yeah. And I, I think also just in terms of like a process of, of critique to say like, yeah, we're, we're not only just celebrating like great job, everything looks great, that we're able to be honest with each other too and say like, this one's not your best one. And, or, and, and really, we both um, tend to add a lot of images to the, the folder. And I think that it's really one of the best scenarios that the more work you have, then you can curate from that and say, like, mm -hmm. yeah, that direction of these three images we're excited about and those other two are, um, you know, maybe you're, you were onto something, but it needs to take a different path. Um, and I think what Dan was saying about the history, knowing each other's work is that we can see um, an evolution of it to see when it's getting stronger or, or just changing in, in some way, in a good way. Um, and to say, yeah, follow that, or that seems worthwhile. And we're also both um, teachers, we're both teaching art classes for undergrads. And that probably starts to play a role in terms of, um, you know, seeing when you're just looking at a lot of work, you start to get a sense of like, mm -hmm. you know, where, where's the success, where's the effort, and where, where did something fall short, so. Nice. Yeah, Dana, that, or um, Dan and I, we have an interesting history because you were my painting one professor when I was an undergrad and while you were getting your MFA and it just made me think about how your work has evolved because I saw your MFA show at Urban Art Space which was super cool and I was just wondering if you had any thoughts on how your work has evolved over the last few years and now examining this show with Diana. Um, I'm wondering if you've reached a new kind of precipice in your work or if you're still touching on similar themes that you've worked on in the past. The work well, first of all, I remember you from my class. <laughs> that was a long time. 
Andy is very interesting character and a joyer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> First of all, do you still draw? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I make work every now and then, still trying to get into it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had my show last year, so. Um, but anyway, this is about you, not about me. <laughs> um, I'm interested. Um, the work has certainly evolved, I would say. Um, the graduate study period at Ohio State was so much about figuring out and the testing different direction. And it was also a question about um, placement ident and identity. I think that's just something that um, avoidably everyone in this country as an immigrant have to sort through at some point. Um, so the work, those oil painting at an urban art space were full with very identifiable Chinese traditional painting motif and uh, identifiable imagery that are obviously from a different culture and different country. I think if I saw those work and the, make a comparison of the current work, I would say the current work is so much less concerned about um, the cultural signifier, if you may say, like it's the color and the imagery are not so literal in terms of where it's coming from. It's more of um, digested, I would say, like, you know, it's yeah. not like the shape of the, um, the signifier or image, they're not so over the top in terms of its cultural reference. And now, but I think they're still there. I think that my focus is, has moved on not so much about make a display of mm -hmm. the story and the, the background of my personal life, but rather focus on what is a collective story or narrative that can connect and to speak to a general human experience and to still allow that specific, specific reference because that's always just gonna be embodied in my own personal experience and handling. Mm -hmm. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, and that, just to piggyback off that, uh, Diane, I first saw your work at a show at Wild Goose Creative and I remember I just fell in love with how you almost like intentionally use Photoshop to give it like a, a non-technical look, if I might say that. Like you're you're using the the technical tools to create an untechnical image. Um, and I, I just love that process. And I, I wonder if you're I just wonder what goes in behind the scenes on that thought. Like are you trying to give it more of like a painterly look or is it almost like just making fun of how everything has to be so perfect and precise nowadays and now you're just wanting to kind of break the rules? What goes on in that in those head spaces? Yeah, I I think that those works and, and the current trajectory that I've been headed with digital work um, has been informed by a lot of um, theory and other artists working uh, in the contemporary landscape of, of digital work to to um, kind of let the properties of the digital medium come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. um, that. Photoshop has an interesting um, history and, and kind of identity of a, of a tool that hides itself, right? The, the mm -hmm. um, stereotyped Photoshop image is one that what you couldn't perceive would be Photoshopped. Um, but there's all sorts of default tools and settings that um, have a very clear and distinct visual characteristic to them. So um, artists in the last 20 years have really been um, playing around with, you know, what's, what is that look? What is that um, sort of true form of the digital material that we're working with? So um, I, I would liken it to, in some ways, like a, the 60s um, abstract expressionism and, okay. and sort of letting paint be paint on the canvas, um, that it's, you know, let the digital marks uh, be themselves on it on the canvas and for me um, it, it seemed like a natural combination with the, the content that I was looking at which was um, kind of right, fractured bringing lots of different images together this process of collage that they weren't you know they're not intended to become a, a, a seamless 
space that that this idea of like a dream space or or kind of like the active memory where things blend together and are are swayed and change over time um, that it, it's not necessarily a realistic space in any way so there are you know the photographic elements of it you know establish a familiar real space but then how they're they're mixed or blended or that an edge of a brush mark um, that mm -hmm. masks and hides something else and reveals something else um, that those uh, create maybe a clash or um, you know a, a signal that those are um, coming together in a constructed space as well so okay and I have a question cool. about um, the subject matter that we see in your video collages. Uh, you talk a lot about um, memory and it, were you directly influenced by things that you watched as a, as a kid? Um, were you always fascinated with sort of video and not necessarily the production of video, but just the, the medium of video? Has this always been sort of something that you've explored or is this something that you've explored later on in your artistic career? Yeah, I, I think um, certainly by the end of my time as a grad student at OSU in 2015, I was uh, definitely thinking a lot about um, personal memories um, and particularly at that time, um, misunderstanding of memories um, where like you can think back to a time but maybe you didn't as a, especially like as a child, not having like a clear picture of what was going on or like well, if you didn't have all the information and how does that um, misunderstood memory kind of manifest itself visually. Um, so that, so it, it's actually interesting, you know, Dan was talking about her thesis work also having a big a proponent of, of identity uh, in it. Um, I think I was at that point too where it was a, about my own personal memories, um, but then it has kind of started to transform into my, um, a mix of my memories blended with, um, yep, television, movie, um, internet culture, imagery, that, like things that I um, would be consuming in the past and in the present um, mixed together. So, yeah, the, I think the influence of, of the video medium in general, te I think television especially um, has played a big role in the direction of, of how I'm thinking about these memories. So I think it's undeniable that, you know, the, the media that we're consuming is influencing how we're thinking about life in general, so. Um, so moving forward, um, you know, we're in July right now of 2020. So. Uh, as you both start to look at what next year holds as far as creating work, um, knowing right now the limitations that may or may not exist with studio visits, um, you know, creating in a studio or, or getting materials or seeing other people, how do you think um, this might reflect work that you create over the next year? Good question, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I have all kinds of salt. Um, Diana and I are overdue for a studio conversation, but um, there were a few things that I was on my vision board. Uh, earlier you brought up this question um, and I have said previously our collaboration had mainly been a parallel of our own practice and the finding the common ground in the concepts. And uh, um, one thing that I'm very eager to test out is the next phase of potential collaboration of work on the same piece. Um, mm. And of course it has to be bigger than ever, and most ambitious. I just, I think that's just how I like to think of things. So um, in a way I felt like COVID-19 had created a different kind of landscape for studio artists. And I would like to not see it as a limitation or a narrow down, I would like to think of it as a way to amplify our reach and be able to communicate from vast and far. I guess I have to think that way now I'm alone in Texas. Uh, there's no other way for me to survive. Um, yeah, so for next phase, uh, speaking for myself, I think one thing I'm interested in test out is distant collaboration, but work on one project. It sounds more challenging, but I, at the same time, I feel like it's more doable. 
now, given this landscape? Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's a lot more yeses happening right now than there are yeah. no's, where before we kind of just shut down the idea uh, of working on one piece collaboratively, distantly, was like, no, that sounds impossible. And now I right, think there's right. a lot more yeses that are happening. Diana, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just that, you know, we had talked about, you know, mixing, um, you know, drawn imagery, maybe coming from Dan in, in terms of like um, drawings or paintings uh, and, and using video to give them a sense of time, passing, uh, transformation, um, that we can mix our, our strengths that, um, you know, her, her hand-drawn things and my technical manipulation of things, that that could um, be an interesting direction to pursue. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I'm trying to think of how you two would go about that. Would it be like, Diana, you create a digital image and then Dan, you would paint on top of it or you could like do printmaking on top of painting. Do you guys have any thoughts about or have you even started a conversation about collaborative work like that? We haven't yet to okay. start the conversation, but it's probably will be something like, again, via Google. Yeah. Like, like scanning drawings and sending them to me. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Diane, I had one question about your piece about the, the standoff where they're glaring at each other on and on and on, which is just so amazing. Um, can you just speak a little bit more about that? I just always think about that piece and I was just able to watch it again on our uh, gallery page and it's just such a pleasure to watch. Power and Cool mm -hmm. is the name of it. And um, that came, the, I'll start with the title, Power and Cool uh, is a chapter title from uh, Roland Barthes' Mythologies, okay. uh, which uh, Dan and I were reading different chapters in that and talk, discussing it back last year um, during our studio times. And um, it, one of the things that I was seeing and like I was watching, I was literally watching like Westerns on like me TV on like the, you know, during the middle of the day, I'm eating lunch at home <laughs> watching um, The Rifleman or um, Gunsmoke and seeing um, you know, these daily episodes, they're always constructed in like a very um, the reliable way. Every episode's kind of the same, um, uh, but there's just a lot of dynamics. In, and I think it was also really compelling to see um, like in a, as a sort of just older style of production, right? There were maybe only two cameras and they're like, you know, it's just shot or reverse shot. They're just looking at each other and talking for like 10 minutes. And, you know, it's not that common that we would see that now, um, like kind of the slower pace of it. And um, I had also watched um, the Sergio Leone uh, trilogy, the dollars trilogies. Um, so like a fistful of dollars um, mm -hmm. was the first one. And, um, I was also just really intrigued by the pacing of it where it was just very slow and a lot of in a good way very slow and a lot of just staring and, and looking and I was also thinking at the same time about um, just current inter internet culture of like mashing up different things together bringing them together into the same world um, through that kind of video editing and um, yeah, so I just tried to, I collected a lot of footage, um, cut out a lot of just scenes where there's just a lot of staring um, and, and not blinking, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and and established those moments of tension. And then um, my goal was to then break that tension um, with the contrast of the childhood imagery of like kind of idealized and, and kind of badly drawn um scenes from the same kind of genre, um, this kind of idealized space, like totally unrealistic space um, of these kind of imagined personas that lived there. And, um, and contrasting that with the music and the, um, the footage of Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle is in there too. So yes. I'm just trying oh to like God. totally break the the seriousness and the sort of macho-ness of the stare down um, 
and, and question that um, relationship between them. And um, so that was my goal with that. Okay. I gotta say, I was enjoying a lot um, when I was watching uh, your video work that that sort of interruption that exists um, where suddenly you, you, you're setting this scene, you're setting this landscape in this uh, tableau and then suddenly there's this interruption of, uh, you know, Dewey or there was, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, there was, a, there was a clip from Star Wars, right? Yeah, yeah true. and it just becomes right. like such an interruption where you're jolted and then you, and then you just like take the viewer back into this space that you created again, this like landscape. Yeah. That, and one more detail about that, the Star Wars clip there was um, that I, I was definitely thinking about the slowness of, of these scenes and that they're not chaotic, they're very simple. And then, yeah, that, that that's from like episode one, terrible movie, uh, where it's just yeah. like total chaos, like constantly, there's so much noise, there's no direction. Um, so that was, yeah, like using that as like a beat of, chaos against the, the calm was my goal there. And Dan, I remember talking about this when we did your um, virtual tour about how you use your mark making as a form of collage, but yet they're not, you know, it's not cut out from anything, but it's almost just um, painterly collages. And I was seeing if that's if that scene that you're creating and on the canvas is that um, that distinction between objects supposed to kind of like weave a story around the objects or they're supposed to be seen separately on the canvas at the same time. Um, if that makes sense. <laughs> I think of those gestural marks as a way to orient space in a sense. Um, like there are, in my opinion, there are recognizable objects plants, tree, animal. Um, then there are just marks and color, like pretty much 2D forms at its essential. Um, my practice has a focus to sort of trying to find a balance and a present them both. I think in this sense, I might draw a parallel of Diana's effort of um, for the property of digital medium as just the process itself. I think in my work, there's also this effort of presenting marks and colors just as merely marks and color. And also, but at the same time, this needle ambition of trying to see how they may or may not coexist with recognizable imagery because ultimately we only pull a story or narrative together through recognizable reference. Um, the story of Diana's clash comes from those garments trying to shooting and staring, but at the same time she has those traits of uh, Photoshop. I think it's sort of a parallel that the gesture marks um, colors and those abstract non-identifiable moments are sort of like a juxtaposition with um, image. Mm -hmm. So we use a, the language of clash a lot in our statement and that's sort of what it's referring to. Not necessarily like I have to use a scissor to cut and paste, but more of this method of making the work and thinking of clash. Yeah, I, I love that juxtaposition. It makes me think, do you, do you kind of flip flop that idea where Dan, would you ever use like digital tools to sketch out a painting or Diana, do you sketch out a digital drawing before you put in any effort behind the screen type of thing? Are those roles reversed at all? Hmm, that's a very interesting question. You've never done that, Diana? I really have not drawn a lot recently <laughs> on paper. I, in 2018, I actually, I did do some um, paper collages and um, that was it there was an excitement to that and I'd like to try that again um, but mostly I've been kind of clinging to my digital tools <laughs> feel that <laughs> yeah I would say the same I think there's a default sort of way of getting our work that we're most intuitive 
Mm -hmm. uh, and it's important to keep that intuition by not diluting the process too much. Um, although I have worked on um, like oil on paper and then take a picture and then look at the picture when it's mm -hmm. this small, like a thumbnail, thumbnail size, I was like, oh, it needs this and this and this. Like, so changing the scale is a tool mm -hmm. that I use with digital documentation. Okay. I'm gonna say something outrageous and um, going along with uh, Dan's uh, sort of um, collage as an um, concept more as, as, you know, like the concept of collage, the abstraction of collage without, you know, the, the layering necessarily of paper or other material in the collage making process that, I'm gonna say something outrageous. I think that collaboration is, is a form of collage and that abstract oh, yeah. sense. It totally makes sense. <laughs> it's very wise to say that, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I also think of the clash like on a different perspective as a way of finding reference that it's not too self-focused. Um, I think part of the studio practice, especially that you're alone in your studio, is that you get into worry kind of self-centered kind of perspective. And we need like sort of anchor point, I think, one way or another, whether stu through studio critique or collaboration. Um, and having clash as a working method, I think it's a way of finding like anchor point within a given piece of work. Um, so we're not too self-indulgent, uh, we're too nostalgic. I don't know, I, I think it's a emotional, it's a, it's a checkpoint for like, emotions I think what do you say Dana yeah the especially for me like the video work I you know spend a long time working on that and you get way into the details and it's like you do need to step back mm -hmm. and say like um, you know <laughs> was I too invested in in an aspect of this and, and um, you know to then have feedback um, to have also just like contextual conversations. So like the fact mm -hmm. that we were talking about Barthes and then we were, were looking at his mythologies writing, um, that that, gave, that suddenly gave me some clarity um, to add to as the title to the piece, um, Power and Cool, that um, yeah, that that was like an added element, um, you know, from our interaction. I like that you guys, so you guys purposefully uh, did a, a sort of book club where you guys shared a, a, a text together and whilst you were creating work. Is that my understanding? And that was a purposeful intent, like that was in, of your intent to do that. Is yeah. that something that you would recommend to artists who are wishing to collaborate together um, to find some, some text, some work in which to dive into together that is separate from your own work? to then talk about as part of the process or? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. I don't think it has to be a book club. Mm -hmm. I think um, collaboration essentially has to build on a process of getting to know each other. Like you cannot, well, I guess you can uh, collaborate with a stranger, but that's a different kind of aspect that we're talking about. Um, I think that the collaboration between me and Diana came naturally because we were really not aiming at like have some strict collaboration. Um, but when we find enough of common ground, it becomes a natural thing to do. Yeah, I, feel I, I forget how we got onto the topic of Barth's writing, but you had it, you had a book of it and I had, a, I happened to have had a book of it and had not read it yet. Um, and so we were just talking and said, let's I think some, it was a key word of, uh, sorry to interrupt, um, yeah, the word ahead. myth that got us. Yeah. Like, I think yeah, it was yeah. even our statement that our work together, um, what's the verb you use? Like, unpack myth or? Or like, just to kind of uh, examine how it's constructed, like how, how, does culture build 
mist. sort of personal mist, n not necessarily like, um, you know, like Greek mythology or like that kind of, or like Americana mythology or something, but that it's like, um, you know, our own personal like stories and histories uh, and sort of like telling of identity and, and mythology. Um, how is that constructed? So. We also listened to the audiobook together uh, about Charlene Dion. Is that Celine, kind of? yeah, Celine Dion. Yeah, Celine Dion. Celine <laughs> Dion. Yeah. Um, it was now thinking back, I, was, I wasn't even uh, reflecting on this part, but it's sort of a different angle of looking at the cultural myths as well. Like her, um, her as an icon, and her yeah. voice, and her personality as an icon. Yeah. And it was about like the like listeners that love like that love her music yeah, and, right, yeah. and intensely follow that. Yeah. 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 I love that how it's almost like the duality, like Diana York is like the mythology of like Western culture and then Dan yours is like the mythology of like traditional Chinese culture and yeah. You know, it's like this yeah. interesting just juxtaposition, one so much more recent and you know, one has you know, maybe it's a little bit more shallow, like, you know, the American spaghetti Western is obviously not as richer than um, the expanse of major Chinese culture. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I love that. I feel like I'm just putting that together now, how those two play off each other. Really and um, may I add that we were so interested and commit to it exactly because it's not like a easy black and white in, mm interpretation process like I I guess what I want to say is that um, I can see that both Dan and I are into the subject that we are in right now is because we are so sincere at the same time there's like um, criticism and doubt and the reflection that all wrapped up in sort of like life experience and uh, um, and the understanding that we are still yet to unpack fully. Mm -hmm. So in the way that the work are sort of like practical experiments to unpack the questions that like intrigues ourselves um, mm -hmm. and hopefully for audience as well. Very cool. Yeah, the, I guess to yeah, go off of that is to say, yeah, these are really just things we are thinking about all the time. <laughs> that we're just intrigued by these um, stories or themes or histories or memories, and we just want to like articulate them and in in their full dimensionality. This like, yeah, the criticism and and uh, amplification and um, yeah, just trying to figure it all out. Cool. We'll never figure out, Dana. <laughs> yeah, we, we might not, yeah. <laughs> if you guys were to give um, some advice to artists out there right now who are um, working and possibly thinking about, I want to take my work from just being so insular and just myself working in, a, in my lone environment to working with someone else, um, what advice would you give to finding somebody to collaborate with to what what have you found does and doesn't work in the collaboration process what have you tried in collaboration that you're just like that doesn't work for us like we're not going to do it again instead we're going to go this way i'm really interested to to hear that i could start by saying um that our studio visits began also as an offshoot of a critique group that Dan uh, began, and then I helped continue after Dan moved to Texas, um, a critique group that included um, maybe about like 10 people, um, mostly our friends from grad school um, that were still in the Columbus area. So that was actually a really great, um, experience to kind of again like stay in touch with those people that we knew um, and we had been looking at their work for a while but now we needed a format to continue the conversation so um, you know we would get together every other week and look at two people's work 
um, in a space and and have like a a thorough conversation regarding where they were at and, and issues they wanted to discuss. And then um, from that, Dan and I also wanted to to make work together too, to not just be there for the end result um, for the crit. Uh, so I think just um, maybe sometimes setting up a formal um, space to start conversations can be good um, mm -hmm. to see what other people are doing um, and, and have that um, you know, format hold you to it, right? That, I, you know, you have to finish the work to be ready for the crit, like that, that can be a great tool. Um, so I think that was a, a good starting point success. Um, I think maybe then in terms of things that like don't work, I'm not sure if I have a good example, but it's just like, yeah, if it's not working, just there's no need to stick with it either. Like if you need to change the terms of something, go for it. I want to add like in terms of a collaboration, um, to be fair and respectful of other people's practice and their space is really important. Um, I have a tendency of overspoke and uh, dominant conversation. Mm -hmm. And I ask myself when I send out emails where you invite other people to collaborate. I ask myself, is it really just like my idea that I want someone to execute it for me? Or um, mm -hmm. there's like a true unknown and excitement about what the other person brings into a collaboration. I, you know, self-aware of my outgoing personality, I, I tend to like, you know, I have a checkpoint of, uh, am I being respectful and then inviting and fair in other people's work and time. Um, so, you know, with that being said, I think it's also about finding the person that is sort of at the same rhythm and the same tempo, maybe not strictly, but that can work with you. I, I tried to collaborate with my husband. It just resulted in failure after failure. Just <laughs> <laughs> too close, um, too, too competitive. They all can be issues, but I feel like it's just uh, keep making the effort and don't be discouraged. It is, the first time didn't work out. Yeah, I, I think it's rare to find two prolific artists like yourself collaborating at such a intimate level. So it's definitely a cool thing to see and something to learn from. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. Thank you. Well, where does that lead us, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just wanted to open back up too. if there's anything um, that either of you wanted to, that Andy and I didn't touch on that you want viewers to, to know about your work or that you want them to get across when they see your work right now, whether it be on the 934 gallery website or your personal websites, or if they see your work in the wild somewhere, um, if there's anything that you would want a viewer to get from your work. I think that that'd probably be a good place to wrap up. What is, what is that? What, what do you want them to walk away with? Hmm. I want the viewer to like my work <laughs> and uh, to enjoy looking at it. Um, and if they're willing, find it calming and meditative and inspire to have a studio practice of some kind to engage and uh, even have a reflective process of their own. I think if anyone can walk away, seeing my work with any bit of that, I will be completely satisfied. Yeah. I, um, I, I like that word like meditative that you use, Dan, that mm -hmm. um, I think that it's, for looking at any work um, that I'd hope that there's, that we've embedded enough there that it just pulls you in to look for a mm -hmm. long time. I think, um, you know, still, even though like a painting, it's all there all at once and you walk in and you see it all, right? it takes a long time to look at everything. Um, and that maybe that this would get people to experience that process of really looking um, and then, you know, we chose that as part of our title, that, you know, yeah. remembering while looking. 
right. um, that there's a, there's an active process there too. And I would also say for my work um, that I'm hoping that people do find a humor in it that um, yes. I think sometimes, you know, you, you go to like a big art museum, the Hirshhorn in DC or something like there's, you'll see work there that's, and you know, maybe like, you know, it's like, oh, big important work, but a lot of times there's a great humor in a lot of artwork and it's meant to be there so <laughs> you can laugh at it. Um, yeah. We want you to laugh at it uh, when there's a moment that's funny, yeah. I, I appreciate you saying that. I think that that's really important as I try to get, um, you know, friends uh, who have no background in art to come to a gallery space or a museum space with me and appreciate work. There's that idea that we've been brought up with that, like art it has to be capital A art on a pedestal on a white wall and it must be taken seriously. But so often um, I get tickled when I walk into a gallery space and I see the humor in work and I see that it's nonsense um, and I can have a chuckle. So thank you for reminding everybody <laughs> that is there, that is actually there and we should be enjoying that. So. Um, I want to thank both of you uh, for joining Andy and I today for this artist talk and I want to thank all of our viewers who have tuned in and watched us uh, talk about some artwork, talk about collaboration, talk about collaborating long distance too, especially in this moment while we're um, in the middle of a pandemic and art has been disrupted, but Diana, Dan, you've given me some hope to think that um, art hasn't really been disrupted as much as we thought that it might have been and instead we're facing this uh moment of art evolution um, that we can still create when we're finding new ways to create collaborate and view work and have these conversations so this is a moment of hope i think um and i want to invite all of our viewers today that if you enjoyed what you uh listened to um check us out at 934gallery.org uh, we are a 100 percent volunteer run organization um we do this out of the love of art and out of the love of columbus and out of the love of um uplifting those around us so if you enjoyed what you saw today uh feel free to make a gift uh, there's a donate button on our website um you can also just follow us on social media and see about upcoming uh, exhibitions and artist talks so thank you everyone i really appreciate you being here today thank you Thanks for having yeah. us thank you guys bye bye, bye.